In this video, we're going to look at why I believe in the next few years we're going to move away from statically generated paper-based customer personas and we're going to live in a world of meta-human-based AI-driven personas that we will be able to talk to and interact with. And also, I'm going to look at why I believe that technology exists already today. So I think there are two or three areas where I believe this is going to have the maximum impact. The first area is going to be in the software development lifecycle, where we're using uh, techniques such as design thinking to get underneath and understand our customers. And there's different types of personas. There's some personas which are fictional, which are derived by the experience of the teams and the user experience designers that are uh, creating those personas. Or there's other types of personas which are driven from user research where you kind of go and ask questions of the customer, you do interviews, you do surveys, etc., and you bring all of those insights th together to form those personas. So there's different ways of doing that, but one of the things that's always common about these personas is it brings out the human elements of that. So there is a picture uh, in the persona, you can see what the person looks like, you know, what color of hair, what, what ethnicity, whether they're male or female, what their name is, what their background is, what age they are, right, where they studied at school, um, what their goals are, what their beliefs are, wh what they do at the weekend, what their interests are, what their hobbies are, to try and bring a richness of a person. So that when you are then starting to design the new experiences and when you're looking at existing experiences and existing customer journeys, you can put yourself in the shoes of that persona. You would be able to understand what their pain points are, what issues they have in the journey, what their frustrations are. And then of course, as you design new experiences, you can use that same persona to then think about, has it solved their pain points? Is it satisfying their needs? So it's a great thing to do, but of course the persona is a 2D thing. It is it is locked up in a bit of paper and in post-it notes and in, in, in user research, but you, you can't question it. There is no human representation. I can't go and have a conversation with the persona, but that's where I think we are going to be in a couple of years. We will be able to generate these personas and then go and have a conversation and ask it questions and say, hey, where are you experiencing pain? What are you believing in? And have real answers come back back from there. So that's the first scenario where we are at the beginning of the software development life cycle. I think the second scenario exists at the continuous part of the software development life cycle. And that is where you think about your analytics engines, where you think about your voice of the customer systems, where you think about um, your CRM systems and, and where you are extracting insights from real users whether it's through customer surveys such as Medallia, Qualtrics, SurveyMonkey, Google Forms, whether it's insights that you're extracting out of your CRM system, your customer profile, you know, um, and using that to sort of aggregate back. And then, of course, also how they are interacting with your system via analytics, right? Which pages did they visit? What customer journeys are they on? Uh, what parts of your solution are they interacting with? So taking that data and insights and then being able to link them back into your customer lookout likes or your customer uh, profiles in that sense, and then be able to form a customer persona based on the insights and the interactions that we you had the system. Now, of course, what would be really cool is to join the first one and the, the last one together. But I think, again, if we look at this um, meta-human world, we want the ability to, to exist in a sort of virtual reality world with a meta-human representation of a customer and be able to ask questions and say, hey, you know, which products are you buying? What, why did you buy that product? Um, how are you thinking and, and, and really interact with this sort of virtual representation of your customer. So that's the future vision that I think will exist within the next few years. But as I said, I believe the technology building blocks to create that future now exist today. And I'm going to look at what those building blocks are and how that would enable the future state that I think we're going to get to. So the first building block that I think we need is the ability to create these digital representation of humans, these meta humans, and that is now becoming available in the Unreal Engine. So if we look at my screen just now, what we're going to look at is some 
AI generated virtual humans that you can now create within Unreal. So if we just press play for a second. I am MetaHuman. As you see from the video there, they are AI generated virtual humans that exist in a 3D world and they are incredibly lifelike. So as you see their facial expressions movements, you can hear their voices, you see them speaking and that's all AI generated metahumans. So it's a very cool technology from, from Unreal. And if we again look at the next part of this, you will be able to see that using the metahuman creator that forms part of Unreal, you can then start to give all the traits that you would expect from a metahuman. You'd be able to say what their hair color is, whether they have a beard, whether they're male, whether they're female, what their skin tone is. And you can get to an incredible amount of detail in there, right? You can change the shape of their face, the the every little detail of their hair, their beard, their mustache, or you know how their eyebrows are shaped, or how long their eyelashes are, what color of eyes. You can really get into this photorealistic human uh, representations. And the technology is absolutely astounding. So that first building block is there, and that's a 3D version of a human that you can interact with, uh, whether it's in a, a 2D landscape or in a virtual reality landscape. So you've got something that you can kind of interact with there. And if you think about that, that's what we do in the design thinking process when we give a person a name and what they look like and, and, and all of the features of that person. So that's the same as design thinking in that sense. And similarly, when we look at uh, our analytics engines and we work out what age somebody is and what background they are as we build up their uh, their persona from, from our data, again, same sort of thing. So we can get this sort of metahuman uh, virtual representation of our customer. The second part that, that we really need the ability to do is is talk to a customer. So that ability to converse, the ability to um, talk to, to the person so they understand what you're saying and then get this sort of natural speech recognition coming back. So if I were to look at something like, and I'm gonna use uh, Google in this, this case. So if I look at Google's text-to-speech engine for a second, um, what we can sort of do there from my screen is I'm just gonna um, type in something really simple, something like, hey everyone, my name is Chris, I like NFL, I'm a New York Giants fan, I live in England, but I'm Scottish. So, so the sort of things that you could sort of expect in a normal day every conversation. So I'm just gonna play this for a second. Um, hey everyone, my name is Chris, I like NFL. I'm a New York Giants fan. I live in England, but I am Scottish. So that's pretty cool. That's a very standard text-to-speech sort of engine there. Um, I can change uh, the voice type, so I, I can switch around to, let's use a different perm. Hey everyone, my name is Chris. I like NFL. I'm a New York Giants fan. And I can also do things like I can change the speed, I can slow down the speed, I can change the pitch. So I'll make it slower and I'll, I'll make it a, a little bit kind of deeper of pitch. Hey everyone, my name is Chris. I like NFL. And I also can even change the language or locale. So if I wanted to, I can uh, I can give it an American accent. Hey everyone, my name is Chris. I like NFL. I am a New York Giants fan. I live in England, but I am Scottish. And one of the reasons I'm showing the Google version of the text-to-speech is not only does it have different languages and different accents and variations, but actually one of the new features they have in beta just now is the ability to model your own voices and put that through the text-to-speech engine. So in the same way as I can shape a human, a meta-human, uh, in my virtual reality environment, I'm now also be able to shape a very custom voice that that metahuman is gonna have and, and, and really represent the persona that I'm creating with a realistic sounding voice as well. So that's two of the key building blocks for me to be able to interact with, with a metahuman. And then the third one is I need that ability to converse and the ability to ask questions, get answers, and uh, look at the kind of a knowledge base or corpus of information for the metahuman to, to respond. So this time I'm gonna use an AI-based knowledge-based solution. So in this case, uh, something like Watson Discovery. So if we look at my screen here, I'm gonna ask a, a question. So in this case, uh, I will ask, what engine oil should I use in the Pontiac GB? So 
it's going to fetch some results and then it's going to come back with a response so we could so in this case it's saying your vehicle engine requires oil meat and gm standard blah 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 look for and use only oil that meets this standard so let's copy this text for a second so as you can see i can ask natural language based questions and i can get answers back um, from that corpus of information and again that's going to be one of the key things that i need from my personas i need that ability to, to bring in all the the needs and the feelings, etc., and all the things that you've learned from the uh, voice of the customer research um, into a corpus of information uh, for that digital persona. And then I, and this technology, as you can see, is, is exactly what you would need. And then I can use that to ask questions and get answers back. So, so that ability to query uh, the, the digital human, the meta human, and get answers back really could be powered by a QA based system such as Watson Discovery. And of course, there are other um, QA based engines you can, you can, of course, use. So if I just take that answer and then I'm just going to plug that back into the text to speech engine for a second and we'll play it. Your vehicle's engine requires oil meeting GM standard GM 6094M. Look for and use only an oil that meets GM standard GM 6094M. So as you can see, I've kind of completed the loop now. I've got the ability to create metahumans. I've got the ability to um, have realistic speech to text with and model different voices that, that reflect my persona. And now I've got an AI engine that sort of forms my corpus of data that can ask questions and get answers. And I can join these all together to have an interactive digital human that I can speak to. So the last thing that you kind of really need to do is then link up that data, be able to get all those personas, um, get all of your user research, all of your voice to the customer, all of your customer data, and really bring that together and link that to the personas that you have and then ingest it into something like a Q&A engine where you can actually uh, ask those questions and that's really just integration there's nothing magic in there all of the crm systems have apis all of the voice of the customer survey systems have apis that's really just about extracting that data out and then linking up to the personas that you've got linking it into uh, something like uh, discovery hooking it up into a kind of uh, uh, a digital human that you've got with something like unreal bring that all together and we can now exist in a virtual reality environment where I can ask my personas questions and it can give me genuine answers back to the questions that I have and I have a persona that I can interact with. So that static persona, um, I believe in the next two to three years will no longer exist and it will be replaced with these AI-driven personas. And the reason I believe that is, as i just shown you, the technology already exists. Anyway, I hope you found this useful and I, I speak soon.